I'll show you how to retire with just $197. You can retire using the options wheel strategy on SPY. With an account with $197,000, a wheel strategy on SPY can bring in 3% per month. That would be $5,910 in gross monthly premium collected. I'm going to be showing you the way to do this safely and consistently while also managing the position should it go against you. The reason I like SPY is because it has a daily expiration and lots of volume to easily get in and get out. Here's a breakdown of what SPY holds, which is big and safe companies, meaning this one ETF is very diversified for running the wheel strategy. The SPY wheel is a great way to generate income with low risk. SPY is the best overall dollar for dollar investment, in my opinion. It provides the best return per risk. Most people expect an annual return of 8% to 10% from buying and holding ETFs that track the S&P 500 index. But with the wheel strategy, you're getting the best of both worlds in high returns and low risk. People that are sick of losing money have adopted the wheel strategy as their only strategy in their portfolio. And I think that's very smart, especially for the folks that are looking for consistent income. They're not chasing huge returns, they're chasing safety and consistency. SPY is very stable for that. The wheel strategy is a very popular option trading strategy that involves selling covered calls and cash secured puts on a particular stock or ETF in this case, SPY. The goal of the strategy is to generate income by collecting premiums from selling these options while also potentially acquiring shares of the underlying asset at a lower price. To implement the wheel strategy on SPY, you would start by selling a cash secured put option on the ETF at a strike price that you would be comfortable owning the shares at. I like selling puts around a 20 delta. So when I'm trading SPY and I'm selling a put option, I will start out by selling around a 20 delta put option. That means that four out of five times, I'm going to just make money and not even get assigned anything at all. If the option expires worthless, you keep the premium collected as profit. If the option is exercised and you are assigned the shares, you would then sell a covered call option on those shares, collecting another premium. So the wheel strategy is all about cash flow. When you sell puts, specifically cash secured puts, you're collecting premium. When you eventually get assigned, you are selling covered calls and you're still getting a premium. So step number one to running the wheel strategy is selling a put option. You really can't lose on the wheel in step number one because you wanna own this stock anyways. You would love to own it regardless of what happens. So what happens is when you sell a put option is that if it goes down to the strike, you have to buy the shares. And if it does not, then you don't have to buy the shares. Either way though, you make a $1 premium on $20, which translates into five Majority of the time when you sell a put option, it's going to be below the current value of where the shares are trading at at the moment. That means more likely than not, you're going to just walk away with the premium that you collected. In many cases, I coach my Discord members and I show them how to sell a put for a high premium and then most of the time have the option expire out of the money so they can do it on a weekly basis and never even get put or assign the shares to begin with. If you use technical analysis, you can sell at levels where the stock is unlikely to go because at those levels, the stock would be at some very heavy resistance points. Now the stock doesn't wanna be at those resistance points, so when you sell a put right under the resistance point, then that put option never gets assigned or never really gets executed because the stock never really goes down to that level or at least many, many weeks in a row. If you sell around the resistance level, naturally the stock is going to have a difficult time getting down to those resistance levels. That's why you can collect some really big passive income on a weekly basis and never even get assigned the shares. I have even seen in some cases, this is absolutely crazy, where students sell puts for say 10 weeks in a row and finally they get put the shares. But over that 10 week period, what you will realize 
is they have made 5% a week for 10 weeks and now they have to buy the stock, but all that premium that they collected and all that cash that they got into their account, well, basically it adds up to being 50% of the stock's value. In theory, you can get your costs down to basically zero. You can make your stock free. That would take a significant period of time, but it is possible if you keep selling puts on a stock that is rising steadily and you're getting really good premiums, which usually happens on stocks that are trading in the technology space or other high implied volatility stocks. They have such juicy premiums that when you sell put options, you collect a really large amount of capital. You collect a really large amount of premium and all that money coming in, it adds up if you're doing it week in and week out. And before you know it, maybe 10 to 15 weeks out, you have a 50% discount on the stock that you're buying. If you pick a company that is trending sideways or steadily rising, the wheel just feels like a cheat code. But even when the stock falls, as you will see later in this video, there is a full strategy on exiting and creating income even at that point. Now, option sellers are always going to have the advantage because as a buyer, you need something to happen. You absolutely must have the stock do something and that something has to happen fast. So if you're buying a call option, let's say two weeks out, you need the stock to rise by 10% in two weeks fast or you lose the premium that you paid. The wheel strategy does not have this problem. And this is one of my very favorite parts of the wheel strategy. You don't really need to be a genius. You don't really have to do too much planning when you're running the wheel strategy. You simply need to understand when you want to buy the stock. And then later on in just a minute, I'm going to tell you when you want to sell the stock. The wheel is easier because you can plan ahead and use lots of safety measures, but it's harder to predict a big rise or a fall in a stock. But with the wheel strategy, when you sell a put, you need the stock not to fall to that level. But even when it does, you're totally okay with it going down there because you would like to own the stock anyways. Now let's say that you get put shares of stock when you sell a put option. At expiration, you sold a $20 put option and the stock went down to $17 per share. This is where some will say, well, I'm at a loss. Again, if you want the stock anyways, it's not a bad position to be in if the stock came down from $25 and you bought it for $20. Even if the stock is currently at $17, think about being a shareholder. The shareholder went from 25 to 17. However, you have went from $20 down to 17, not to mention how many times you've collected that premium. Even if you collected that premium one time, your break even price is $19 and the current share price is $17. You are way, way better off than a stockholder. So now when you do get put the shares, eventually now you have 100 shares and you're actually qualified to sell a covered call and start selling call options on your position. So you collect income getting into the stock by selling put options. Eventually you will get put with a much lower cost basis. And now you're still in the driver's seat. You still have an advantageous position because now you can start selling covered calls or selling call options for more income. When you sell call options, you now have another passive income stream of premium coming in from the stocks that you own. When you sell a call option, you make sure that you do so at a strike that you don't mind selling the stock. So let's go back to the example. Let's say that you sold a $20 put option. Well here, this is where you will have to buy the stock at $20. Now let's say that the stock went down to $17. You can do a number of things. So to exit this position, you can actually sell a covered call or selling a call option at a specific strike. So that strike is going to depend on the risk that you want to take. Some people decide to sell at the $20 strike. That's because they've collected some premium to get into the stock at $20. So their actual cost basis of the position is not $20 because if you sell a put option for $1, now your cost basis is actually $19. Now, if you decide to sell a call option, you can still do it at $20. However, now you're going to get paid again, let's say another $1. So your average price or your cost basis on this position is going to be $19, not the $20 at the strike price. And then when you sell a covered call option, although you're doing it at $20, if you collect $1, in fact, you can add that $1 to the strike price of 20. So in fact, you're getting out of the stock at $21. This is a really easy strategy because you can basically get in all day at $19 in this example and then sell that stock for $20. $21 all day. That's in the worst case scenario. That's if you get put right away. And then if you sell that stock 
right away. Now, again, in some rare cases, the stock may fall down to like $15 or lower. In that case, you are going to have a little bit more of a difficult time selling call options for premium because it's going to be so far out of the money. However, that is really rare. That happens very, very rarely, maybe one time a year. And still, if you like that stock and you don't mind owning it and holding it, you can always just wait it out. Now, I wanna discuss an example of running a wheel strategy for you to see visually. All right, so this wouldn't be an Uncle Henry video if I didn't jump into my screen and show you guys an example. And if you do appreciate my transparency, make sure that you do subscribe to the channel. It is much appreciated. So now I wanna show you a position that I can open up using the wheel strategy. Now you will notice that I am selling put options on Amazon. Now I understand not everyone has $270,000 to basically play with at their disposal. However, I'm basically running the wheel strategy on many different stocks. And whether you have a small portfolio or a larger portfolio, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you an example of a smaller portfolio because I understand a lot of new people are watching my videos because you want to learn and master options. And I totally respect that you're at the right place. So I'm going to show you an example using a small stock. I'm going to take a look at something like a Palantir, but I do want to discuss real briefly. You can see here that I'm selling put options and I'm collecting massive premium. I mean, just last week I sold this put option on Amazon. You can see here that I'm up $4,279 in just a week. I mean, that's absolutely insane. Now I understand even if you don't have this capital, you can still make a lot of premium. You'll also notice that I'm also selling puts on Facebook. I have the 190 put option. Doesn't matter if you're watching this in the future because you can always run the wheel strategy. All you have to really do is sell a put option. I'm gonna walk through an example in just a second. But you can see here that I'm up 4,000 here, $400 here. I'm on SPY, I'm actually up an even larger amount. Now what I'm doing is I'm basically just selling put options for as long as possible. I don't mind selling put options because at these strike prices, I would love to own the respective stock, whether it's Amazon, Facebook, or SPY. Now I'm running this strategy on any stock. In fact, any stock works as long as there's a few things that have to be in order. In fact, let me just show you an example. So I'm going to type in PLTR. I'm going to open up Palantir Technologies. Now I do want to analyze this stock because it's a popular one and it's also down a lot. I mean, it's down 31% in the past three months. So I'm going to show you how to sell a put option to basically begin the wheel strategy. So step number one in your broker account, it doesn't matter which brokerage you're using, go to trade options for the respective stock that you're picking. Now for me, I like to sell weekly put options because there's a lot of premium and every single week you can basically collect income. So you have a weekly income. However, I will also sometimes go out two weeks. So in this example, I'm going to go out to April 8th. This is two weeks out. Then I do want to make sure that I am selling a put option. So make sure that that is what you're doing. Now sell put option. I'm going for April 8th. Again, if you're watching this in the future, you can just do this at a future date. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell a put option lower than the current share price. So you'll notice right here that the current share price is $12 and 76 cents. So say I wanna buy the stock at $12, which is lower than what it's trading for right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the put option. I'm gonna click right here. Now I can collect $45. So this is about a 4% return, give or take, okay? So I'm betting on this position not to go down to $12, and I'm collecting $45. Don't look at this max loss. It is not correct because basically, if you're planning to do the wheel strategy and you wanna buy the stock, this max loss does not matter because what can happen, the worst case scenario, is you end up owning the stock, which is totally fine. All right, so that's step number one. You collect income to get into the stock. Now I do wanna expand this right here because I wanna briefly cover the bid ask and some of the other details that I do look at. Now I do look at the volume. I wanna make sure the stock has at least 100 volume. Okay, if it does not have 100 volume, then you're dealing with a stock that is not very liquid. And what I mean by that is not many people are trading the stock, which is not a good thing because typically what will happen is you're not going to get a good price on the option that you're selling, okay? The other thing that you do wanna look at is the bid and ask. You want to make sure that it's tight. And what I mean by tight is that it's close together, okay? If the bid is, let's say, 10 cents and the ask is a dollar in 10 cents, that's not good because it's so far apart. You're going to get a price somewhere in the middle, say maybe 40 or $50. However, here you have a very little slippage amount. I mean, very little amount that you have to pay in terms of the difference between the bid and ask spread. So the bid ask spread and the volume are the one of the two most important things that I do look at. Now, the other thing that I look at is high implied volatility. You want to make sure that the volatility is at least 
40. Because when it's 40 or higher, that's a fantastic thing because you're going to be collecting a lot more premium. And the more premium you collect, the faster you can, in theory, get your price down of acquiring the stock to maybe 50% off or even 100% off over time by selling these put options. Now, let's say that you get put the stock. This is where things are just as easy. So if you already have 100 shares of the stock, all you have to really do is have sell call option. So now you can sell a call option. Now, let's say that you got into the stock at $12 per share. So your average cost is $12. However, again, if you recall, we were collecting about $45. So your actual break even or your actual cost is only $11.55. So tell me now, you can basically sell any of these strikes and be completely profitable. You can sell the 12, you can sell the 12 and a half, you can sell the 13. Let's just say we're going to sell maybe the 13 and a half strike. So even though the stock will be lower, these options will have lower premium, but the premium will still be there. So actually, let's go down to 13. So if the stock is trading for $11.50, let's say you're underwater by just $5. That's totally fine because now you can just start selling call options for a premium. And even though the stock went from 12.79 to 11.55, which is a significant fall, you're basically breaking even. And now you can still collect income and start generating passive income from selling covered calls or selling call options. This is how the mechanics of the wheel work. You sell puts to get in and now you can sell, let's say the 13 call option. Now you can start collecting, maybe it won't be $71, but maybe it'll be $45 again. So you're getting $45 to get in, you're getting $45 to get out. Now you have $45 coming in on a very consistent basis on a small position of $1,000. I mean, in a month, that's going to be about $90. Now, let's discuss how to properly manage the wheel strategy based on various scenarios. My Discord community has asked me before what to do if the stock or SPY in this example gets very low, much lower than your cost basis. This part gets complicated and nobody covers this. But here's scenario number one. Let's say that the stock goes down 10%. So for example, you sell a $100 put option it goes down to 90. Well, this is actually not that hard of a position. In this example, because the stock is now $90 and your average cost is 100, you can actually still try to sell 100 covered calls. Now, you likely won't be able to do that in one given week because in one week, that's going to have no premium whatsoever because option traders understand that since the stock is at 90, $100 is 11% away. Therefore, the premium will be very tiny. So what you will have to do is you'll have to sell covered calls that are two, three, or four weeks out at a hundred dollar strike price. Then you'll still be able to collect one or 2% premium while not really losing on the stock itself when it does recover. Now in scenario number two, let's say that the stock goes down 20%. This would be very insane and super unlikely for SPY. I mean, just downright nearly impossible for SPY to fall 20% in a week or two. So, you know, I do stick to weekly trading. So for it to fall 20%, really that's probably not gonna happen, but let's just say it's a different stock. So I know a lot of people like, you know, Tesla, you know, there's a bunch of stocks out there and if the stock does end up going down 20%, let's go back to the example of a stock being worth 100, which is your put, it goes down to 80. Unfortunately, what you're going to have to do is wait and hope that the stock will recover. And hopefully when you're selling puts and doing the wheel strategy, hopefully you're picking stocks that are good to begin with. Because if you're not, and the stock falls down 20%, you start scratching your head, why am I owning this thing? Well, you have to ask yourself, why did you get into that position to begin with, okay? So if a stock goes down 20% and it's very far away from your cost basis, that's not necessarily that bad of a problem if you like the stock. What you're going to have to do is number one, you'll probably have to wait or number two, now this is very interesting. Say that the stock goes down to 80. You can try to salvage and create some income by selling a 90 covered call. So if you sell a 90 covered call, that's not ideal because if the stock were to recover, you would lose some money on this position as a whole and your wheel would not be profitable. But that's the price that you pay when you're doing the wheel strategy on a riskier stock. So if you're doing it on riskier stocks and it does end up falling 20%, what you probably have to do is you probably have to sell around the 90 strike price. However, it doesn't mean that you have to get rid of your shares at 90. What you can also do, say that you sell a 100 put, goes down to 80, you get assigned obviously, and then you start doing 90 covered calls. Say at expiration or basically a day or two before, somewhere in that 
near to expiration time period, say that the stock goes up to $91 and you're upset. You're basically saying, hey, I don't wanna lose these shares yet because my cost basis is 100. I did sell a 90 covered call, let's say it was for a dollar. So technically you're breaking even at 91, but say you don't wanna get rid of the shares. What you can do then is actually roll that covered call higher. So you can take that 90 covered call and close that 90 and then open up a 95. And in most cases, if you do that far out enough, you can still collect a credit or at least break even. But even if you break even, now at least you don't have to get rid of the stock at 90, you can get rid of it at 95. Now let's talk about the call side. If a call goes into the money, what will happen is you will get exercised and lose your shares in the wheel strategy, right? So you first of all can get assigned on the puts, you have to buy stock, but if you get assigned on the calls, you have to sell stock. So say you don't wanna sell your shares. What you can do again is roll and close out that position. What is likely to happen most of the time is that someone will actually end up selling covered calls that are out of the money and it's perfectly fine because as long as it's out of the money, you're going to be collecting premium. If it's in the money, then you're gonna lose your stock if you wait until Friday expiration or you can roll it out higher. There's two things that you can basically do. If you get assigned, so be it. If it's above your cost basis, you're probably happy. If you don't wanna lose your shares and you are at a gain, that's okay too. Again, you can roll. Now, one important thing that I just wanna say, with the wheel strategy, something that people do not realize is no matter which way in which direction it's going, you can still dollar cost average and sell more put options or sell more covered calls by buying more shares, especially if it is below your strike price, especially if it is below your cost basis. So let me give you an example. For example, let's say that a stock is at 100, okay? You end up selling a 90 put option, okay? It goes down to 95. That doesn't mean that you can't sell more put options at 90. Let's say it goes down to 85. You can still sell more put options at 80. So you can continuously sell more put options the entire life cycle of running the wheel strategy and that would be dollar cost averaging the wheel strategy and there's nothing wrong with that the only issue is say you have thirty thousand dollars and you put ten thousand or hey fifteen thousand dollars into apple well you can't really dollar cost more into apple because it's already fifty percent of your portfolio so when you are dollar cost averaging into the wheel strategy you want to make sure that you have 5, 10, 15% of your entire money in a single position. Therefore, if it does go down, you can do more of the wheel strategy on the same stock, dollar cost averaging, but not exceeding like 30 or 40% of your portfolio. The less of your portfolio you have in one single position, the better, the more diversified you are. Now it's very interesting because you can always roll and adjust the option wheel position. If you wanna learn more about rolling, the best video you can watch is right here.